Good evening. So winter is coming. I've got one uh, bad glow plug in the uh, vehicle right now, which is cylinder number three. I haven't determined which cylinder is number three. I've looked online and I believe uh, the cylinder numbering is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I haven't uh, verified that. I can check that electrically later as we go in the uh, process. So to change the glow plugs, you have to take the engine cover off, which is 10 millimeter. Have to take the uh, filtered air pipe off, which is uh, seven millimeter and 10 millimeter. And then uh, we should have pretty good access to the glow plugs at that point. Although I see there's a bit of tubing and things that are in the way. So we'll find out as we go further into the job. You're gonna need to get some tools to do this job. I would suggest you get a uh, E10 socket. Let me just get the camera focused here. It's like a, a quarter inch drive E10. These are pretty uh, necessary on German vehicles. Need to have some glow plugs. I have uh, six Beiru glow plugs. We'll worry about part numbers uh, later. I've got a uh, glow plug controller. I figure that uh, they've all done enough duty together, so I'll put this one in and keep the other one as a spare. I've got a, uh, a reamer for where the glow plug goes in. Again, we'll look at part numbers later. So you'll see that the reamer is significantly bigger diameter than the glow plug. So the idea there is to clean the chamber out of any carbon so that you're getting proper flow all around your glow plug. You'll need a, a deep eight millimeter socket. You can see the deep is relative. If I had a three eighths drive, that might be better, it might be deeper on the inside. I've got a uh, torque wrench here, quarter inch torque wrench to match the uh, socket. You kind of want to be in the quarter inch Looking in the factory service manual, I've seen three different torque settings for the uh, glow plugs. One being 100 inch pounds, another being 110, and another one being 133 inch pounds. So we've got to figure out which one of those is correct. I would say that if it doesn't leak, the lower the better. The glow plugs are pretty common to get stuck inside of the uh, engine. If you're lucky, if one breaks off, it breaks off below the threads or it just generally gets bound up in here with uh, carbon and uh, if that happens if it's down in this area you can just put a block of wood over it and wait for it to pop out of your engine and then stick in a new one if you snap off this end here you'll have to drill it out and there's some fixtures that are available to do that and I'm not prepared to do that so I've got the engine warm right now I'm going to use my torque wrench and uh, tighten it a little bit to see if I can get it to crack and turn. And then if it turns, then I'll, I'll back it out. So uh, it's pretty critical that you know you've got a working torque wrench. So I've got this set to uh, 110 right now. I'm going to go and find a, a bolt somewhere in the building here and just make sure that I can get it to click at 110 because I don't want to uh, snap off one of these glow plugs. That would be pretty much uh, the end of everything. Then I've got some uh, Febby uh, ceramic glow plug grease. So we're going to put this on the reamer tip so that it collects any of the carbon as we're reaming that out. And then we're also going to put it on the shaft of the glow plug because the heating element is here. This serves no real heating purpose. So we're going to coat the shaft with grease so that it makes it easier to remove it uh, the next time it, it comes due. And then you'll put a little bit on the thread as well. So with this vehicle, I know that it's had three glow plugs replaced in the past and they seem to go randomly, which is interesting. I'm used to them all failing within a month of each other, but they, in this vehicle, they seem to not be quite that way. But I'm gonna put in all six new ones and know that I'm gonna be good for more than likely the next 10 years, which will be probably more than the vehicle lasts, depending on uh, how things go in life. I don't know what, what I'm gonna be using this vehicle for in the future, but currently it's my uh, daily driver. 
So those are the uh, items you're going to need. And then also you might want to get a stool or something so you can work in the engine bay. I should have grabbed one of those uh, before I got to work over here. So we'll just pop off the uh, filtered air system. You want to put a uh, cloth over the turbo. See if we can uh, avoid this light. Being a rented workspace, I don't really have a, a good solution for lighting in here that uh, isn't going to be too expensive. Alright, we'll have to work with that. There's a bit of glare. So uh, we'll go ahead and, like I said, take off the uh, air system. So on top of the uh, turbo inlet, there's just uh, a gear clamp. Like I said, if you had the engine cover on, there's two 10 millimeter bolts right here. You take off, take this off here, and there's a 10 millimeter bolt that's captive on the uh, tube that's uh, down there. We'll have to reach in and grab that. I said it before in a previous video. But this tube is kind of fragile. You can hear it kind of crack if you're not careful with it when you're putting it on. And you should look inside of it to see if there's any evidence of uh, contamination, of dirty air getting into your turbo. In the last video I found that there was quite a bit of wear on the turbo. I haven't really identified what the cause of that is as of yet. Now we're going to pull this hose out of the way. Yeah, there's a third line here. So we'll not really be able to show you the inside of the tube here, but you should take a look inside on both ends. Verify there's no evidence of uh, dust ingress. Then we'll, I'm going to bag each end of that tube and then I'm going to put a towel over the turbo. Actually, before I do that, I'll show you what my preference would be if I was organized a little bit more. So you see on this engine here that I'm working on, I just put some uh, plumbing fittings over the intake. That way, like if you put a cloth on the, the turbo when you start the vehicle, it'll get sucked in and destroy your turbo. So yeah, that's not really the uh, goal here. But do what we can to protect it. So like I said, the engine is fairly warm. And uh, I'm just going to take the uh, camera off the stand here and we'll take a peek at the uh, location of the glow plugs. Alright, so they're kind of hidden in here. The first one is underneath of this uh, distribution for the uh, diesel return lines. It's just tucked in here. They're pretty close to the uh, fuel rail. The next one is this gray piece right here. And if you look a bit further, you can see there's another one down there. So it should be one, two, three, and then four is there, five is there, and then six won't really be able to see it, but it's uh, tucked in underneath of this harness. We might need to move that out of the way. So that's where you're going to use the uh, E10, I'm anticipating. And then the E10 again for the uh, fuel return lines. you got to be very careful with these because uh, it has to work when you're done. You can't break any of these parts. They're not readily available. So you got to be super gentle. So I'm going to put the uh, camera back here try to find a way to pull the caps off of these. There's electrical plugs on top of the uh, glow plugs. And then we'll, we'll start popping them off and uh, trying to coax them into loosening off. All right, so I was able to get the connector off. It's just pushed on. It's got a very small wire. It might only be like 14 or 16 gauge. So I just used a pair of needle nose pliers. I think the uh, one's up against the firewall you might need to get like a needle nose plier that's got a bit of a hook in it. So we'll see what it takes to do that. 
So, and uh, I just realized that I should have taken this thing to the car wash and cleaned off the engine before I uh, started this job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen all of the glow plugs and then uh, blow it off, the engine off with compressed air so we don't get anything falling into the engine. So just to gain access to the first glow plug, said so the E10 will take off this uh, fuel distribution, the fuel return system rather. <coughs> Nice of them to use galvanized hardware. The hardware on vehicles seems to be getting better. It's up to the manufacturer to use it, but there's some pretty good options out there nowadays. So we can uh, lift this up. I'm going to be in the way, I think, for most of this, but I'm going to lift it up. And then there's another line in the way below this. So we'll try to move it as well. I'm going to figure out where to put my pliers. So there's no uh, snaps for releasing this, you just got to yank up on it. So that's the first one. Second one. Oh, convenient. So the cable that's in the way is actually the uh, electrical power <laughs> for the glow plugs. That's really smart of them to do that. Handy. And the last one, let's see if you can get it. Maybe. You've got really good grip. Got it. Pull that out of the way. See if we can get the ratchet on there or not. I'm not going to try to remove them yet, but we're going to see if we can reach them before we go too far into this project. No problem there. Got lots of grip on that one. No problem there. All right, no problem there. So I shouldn't have any trouble on the passenger side. That's up the first cap off. Let's see if we're looking in that direction or not. We are. All right. So that's there. You can see I'm essentially filming this in real time. So you see that like within 10 minutes, you should be getting close to pulling the glow plugs off out if you are organized. And don't lose your tools while you're working. This one's a bit challenging. Got it. Got a leaf there. Don't want the leaf in the engine. That's why you're gonna use compressed air and blow everything out of here. Reorganize the wiring a little bit. Challenging one. That wire is only like an inch long. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this. All right. So there's a hook here for lifting the engine. It shouldn't be in the way. We do need to move this uh, electrical boom.
it's always good to take the time to give yourself uh, space to work rather than struggling with it. Hopefully we can reach over here. I don't normally like to reach over the fender. You can scrape the body on the vehicle. This is the uh, vacuum line for the brake booster. There's a vacuum pump on the front of the engine. If it gets really annoying, we can take it off. Thread's a little bit stiff on this one. Eh, looks fine. I don't know what the issue was. fastener somewhere I can't see. Might be clipped on down in here somewhere. We might have to just try and work around that by the looks of it. Hopefully my ass wasn't covering up the whole scene. Now my battery's dying in my camera, so I gotta conserve energy. So I'm going to get that out and then we'll have to fast forward a little bit. Alright, so I got the last glow plug off for the electrical connector. I actually damaged the electrical connector. So we'll take a little bit of a closer look at that in a second. I also found out that the E10 bolts are kind of neat. That they're E10 on the end but they're actually a, a different size diameter. I think that's kind of neat. It saves you a bit of time fumbling for wrenches because I'm sure you can get a pile of torque on one of these. So I'm just going to cover up the uh, turbo here and blow off the uh, areas for the glow plugs. I just have a wand here. So you don't want that in your engine. Or your turbo. Challenging to hold on to this thing. That's why it would have been better to go to a, a car wash and wash this thing off, but here we are. Go to the other side. So I actually started to take out the first uh, glow plug and it went pretty good. So we'll move on to the, the next one. So we'll start by uh, just trying to tighten. I had it set to 110 and it didn't uh, pop. I tested it on here. I don't know if you can see that or not. 
Let's see on the camera. Yeah, just barely. So I used to make sure the torque wrench was working right. So now we got it on reverse. Let's see it down there. There, that one moved a little bit, so we're good. It's not going to break, I don't think. When you're using a torque wrench, don't grab onto this part here. That's not the right place. You really should use the handle, and then you support it at the pivot point so it stays proper and angled. I think it's undoing. I can hear a bit of squeaking. I'll tell you, I've been stressed out about this job. I didn't really want to do it. Uh, I looked at purchasing one Jeep and the person took it to the garage and they snapped off a couple of glow plugs. So that's not really uh, one I wanted to buy. I needed a vehicle that was kind of ready out of the box. It's coming out. So this is a, a Beirut from Germany. You probably won't be able to see that if I can convince it to focus closer to us or not. But that came out. So we're going to ream the uh, chamber here. It looks reasonable. It's, it hasn't really swollen up or anything. We could check it with a multimeter if we wanted. You can see like the salt line on the threads there. So it was uh, getting ready to get stuck. This might be a uh, original. I'm not sure how close we can get with this. So the electrical connector just grabs onto this piece here. It doesn't get onto this part. So you got that out. Trying to think uh, if we should do another one. Yeah, might as well. I'll reach into the back and see if we can get that one to come out or not. I don't really like the idea of having open holes in the engine though. So I will plop this back in if I can find the hole. It's a challenge all on its own. Where did you come from? You know it came out of there somewhere. There it back in the hole. I don't want to be selfish, but I'm hoping that this job goes well and I don't have to use all my bag of tricks on taking these things out. We just be prepared that you could be down without a vehicle, so be careful with uh, this when you're doing it. All right, so that one started to move a little bit as I was tightening it, so that's good. Like I said, the engine is still pretty warm. Here it's squeaking. So if you're watching this far into the video and you're still listening to me talk, please subscribe to my channel. This is uh, probably the first time I've asked anyone to do that. But I'm trying to reach 500 so that we can uh, do a bit of marketing with Amazon. There'll never be any cost to you, and I don't. I'm not putting any advertising in any of my videos. So I thought that was the best solution to try to recoup a little bit of cash for my uh, the cameras I've been buying for this I just to kind of pay for my hobby so 
this one back to the first one here. Find it. Certainly well hidden. This would be a great job to do in the summer when it's nice and sunny outside. It's kind of tight in the chamber, but it came out. So we'll definitely give that one a reaming. I guess the front ones get a lot of salt on them, so that can make it harder for their uh, lifespan. Swing the camera over here a little bit. Try to get away from the light. So we'll give it another shot here. I know there's different levels of people working on their vehicles with different levels of experience I mean so I'd like to show the whole job where I can even if it becomes monotonous I need some knee pads to do this job Just to crawl up on top of the engine oh, it feels good it's gonna move Yeah, I wouldn't do this without a, a torque wrench for removing them because you just don't know how much pressure you're putting on it. And it could turn into a quite a fiasco if you snap one of these things off. As I proved in a previous video, you can start this vehicle with one cylinder down. I'm thinking that the glow plug that hasn't been firing is going to be sooty. So we'll lay them out and look at them as we progress. And anyway, like I said, we'll, we'll get to showing you that. I'm just a little bit more curious now to know what's going on. Next one is here. So yeah, the ones at the firewall are a bit tricky, especially the one on the driver's side. It's a bit ridiculous. I don't know why they did that. I'm sure that their drawing showed that you could just barely reach that thing if everything is working out perfectly. So you can actually hear them kind of squeaking as they come out. Nothing like my Volkswagen I had to do this every two years. And it had like a, it was a inline four running transverse across the vehicle. It had like a copper bus bar that bolted across the face of them. It was kind of fiddly work to do that job as well. All right, now for the last one, Let's see if we need any extra, extra extensions or not. This would be a nightmare if you broke this one off. Oh god. <sighs> Alright, we're going to turn this up to 130. Oh, 
Oh, the chicken, I'm not going to do it. I think that one's in there pretty good. So I might try to hit on it with a hammer or something and try to loosen it. And uh, I'll get back to you to see if we're going to take that one out or not. Alright, so I've uh, put a couple of extensions on here so I could tap on the uh, low plug with a little machinist wrench or hammer. You can kind of, you can get it down on, right now it's all the way down, you're kind of hitting on the electrical terminal. If you back it up and you're just sitting on the hex, then you're actually hitting the glow plug uh, against the threads. So now I've done that, I'm going to, uh, I put my torque wrench back to 110. And I'm just going to try to back it up a little bit. And if this doesn't feel right, I'm going to stop and order the uh, kit. So what I've confirmed by doing this is that you can get a drill straight down on the glow plug. Now you it's really close. I don't know if you could do it on the other side because the cylinders are usually stepped back a bit, and they are. So on the uh, passenger side, I don't think you could get a drill in there on the glow plug. But we're on the uh, driver's side and it looks like it's going to be okay. So like I said, I'm going to try to back it up here. I'm running out of space this extension. It feels like we've had success. Thank goodness for that. We'll see. I might be crying by the end of this video. We'll see. No, it is tight. It's not uh, loosening off at all. I'm just nervous. Well, it's the thread. It's gall, but it's moving. All right, I'm going to spray some oil on this. At least we've got the, the threads turning. So as you saw, I was just tapping on a long extension. Just trying to shock the uh, glow plug. So I'm going to soak that one in oil and we're going to get to that one last if we do it tonight. Alright, so things are moving along pretty good. I've changed the uh, glow plugs on this side and pushed the connectors back on. It's a lot easier to put the connectors back on than it is to take them off. And the rear cylinder on this, uh, the passenger side, is actually forward of the cylinder on the driver's side, so you could get a drill on that if you needed to. So I wanted to clarify that. That was an error on my part when I was looking at the uh, orientation of the engine. So, uh, like I said, that worked out pretty good. I had a little diesel leak here since the last filter change I did, so I replaced this uh, bleeder screw. It really went in tight and kind of weird when I did it the last time. So I saved this uh, and now we're going to put it, I put it back in. Hopefully that stops the leak. So one thing I should have said was that you need to look at your glow plugs and see what they are compared to the ones that you're taking out. Because you wouldn't want to go and do this and find out you got the, the wrong ones, right? So we got this, we'll take a look what we came out. So this is the front one on the uh, passenger side. You see it had a bit of like, galvanic kind of corrosion, which is kind of weird, because I, maybe it's not aluminum. I thought it was aluminum and aluminum, to be honest, when you look at it. Can't really read that one very well. The next ones are pretty clear. They say 4.4 volts. They're all Beirut, they're all, appear to be good quality. Sometimes the uh, heating elements can get kind of contorted and out of shape. And if somebody used uh, starting fluid on it, they can be like burnt right off. I did that in my Volkswagen once and <laughs> they weren't nearly as long, but the whole heating element was gone. It was kind of surprising to see it when you look at my replacement. It may not come into focus, but it's also 4.4 uh, volt just upside down in their Beirut as well. So that's good. And then you put them up beside each other just like a spark plug. 
and make sure that they're the same. When I was reaming them out, uh, you could find, feel that the last like uh, half a centimeter needed to be reamed. So I think it might actually push the carbon into the cylinder to be honest. It got a little bit out on the grease but not quite as much as I had anticipated. So we'll hear when I start it up whether we get a big noise or not when it pushes that stuff through. Hopefully not. So what else was there to look at? So that's the, the reamer. You can see just, uh, maybe you can't, but only the tip of it was really getting much on it. So I've had the uh, glow plug in the back kind of sitting in solvent there for a bit, some WD-40, and I blew it out again with the compressed air. And I found that when I used the reamer, I put grease all the way up to the threads, and it was collecting things on here, actually, like the uh, corrosion products. So that's handy. And then I caught a little bit on here, but mostly caught it on the, uh, the big part of it. Because it's uh, pretty tight, actually, into the uh, cylinder head. So that has been going good. I'm just going to turn the camera off and put it on the tripod and we'll take out a, a glow plug and do the full deal on one of them. All right, so we'll go after the uh, front one on the uh, driver's side now. It's quite accessible. I got the wrong socket on there. So again, this one, it's hard to get it to focus. It's got some corrosion products on it. Doesn't look really any different than the others. I'm just going to lather on some of the grease on the uh, reamer now, and I'll show you that afterwards before we put it in. It helps to have a flashlight so you can get, make sure you drop it into the right spot so you're not introducing anything into the engine. Actually, you can see right down the hole in this one. I don't think I'd be able to film that, but maybe we'll, we'll try. Probably not. I'll save that for a little bit of a Excitement for when you do it on your Jeep, you can take a peek down there. So I just hand tighten it. Take it out. Kind of just try to keep a bit of tension on it and push it sort of sideways to lift it out. So you can see the tip gets a bit of carbon on it. This one a little bit more than the others to be honest. And uh, the shaft on this one stayed quite clean. It didn't pick up any of the aluminum leftovers from the head. So I've got this. Now we're going to put in the uh, New glow plug. So I'm just going to put some grease on this. And we'll torque it down. So when you grease it, I don't put any on the uh, heating element. I do put it on the thread down here. Just some kind of white ceramic grease. So you're going to use the flashlight to make sure you're plopping it in the right place. You wouldn't want to pick up a big blob of dirt on the end of it and then drop it into the cylinder. And if it goes in kind of rough, I would take it out again and wipe off the grease and uh, do it over again because that grease is keeping stuff out of your cylinders.
So I was putting in the first one and I'm kind of getting nervous because I don't want to break one off. So I, even though I, I had reset the uh, torque wrench back down to 110, what I did was I went back and I checked the bolt on the engine that wasn't like a gasket kind of bolt. You don't want to torque down something on your valve cover and then make a leak. So I grabbed onto a bolt and torqued it and made it click at 110 just to satisfy my fear that a, the torque wrench was acting up. Again, you can see I'm supporting the torque wrench so it's not putting any uh, side stress on the uh, glow plug. So I clicked once. I'm not going to make a double click or anything like that. It's not a Windows computer. Now i got to find the uh, plug. There it is. Actually, I'll put it on afterwards because it kind of meanders through the area of the next cylinder. But it just pops on. In fact, I found a piece that fell off. Just bear with me for a second and I'll show you how they plug onto the glow plugs. So, this is the connector. It came off on the, the back one that's actually kind of sort of seized in there. So you push it on. I'm just looking through the viewfinder. But the electrical business end of it is not connected yet. This is just uh, grabs onto the ridge here for just some mechanical support. And uh, see if we can get in there and look at the electrical connector. Again, just bear with me. Hopefully it's worth it. So this is the, uh, the electrical connector that plugs onto the end of the uh, glow plug. So I'll just uh, tape on that connector again because I lost a bit of the top of it. This one I think has been changed or someone attempted to change it anyway because they had cracked the top of the uh, retainer and that's why it, when I was picking away at it, it finished uh, breaking and it fell off. So I'm going to change uh, this next cylinder uh, glow plug then we'll try to get that last one out and hopefully we'll, we'll call it a night and a success and we'll see here in a minute. Alright, so I got the uh, next glow plug in. So it happened again when I was torquing it down I could feel the head flexing a bit, but I wasn't getting a good click. So I put my uh, E10 socket on and I grabbed onto the bolt I'd been using before. And the uh, ratchet was somewhat jammed, it wasn't clicking, but I was able to reset it using this. And when I put the uh, glow plug socket back on, and I had actually gone over the uh, torque I was looking for, but I kind of knew what I was aiming for, I could feel that I was pretty much there. So it, it really pays to be thinking about what's happening and not being in a rush. You're not trying to make money doing this job if you're working for yourself. And you really, you're trying to save money by doing this, not create more problems than you've already got. So uh, take your time. Don't worry about how long anyone else takes to do the job. So we're at the last uh, glow plug. I've been thinking about this for a while, so I know that it should be able to go back in at 110 foot-pounds. So normally if you got like a stuck bolt and you're fighting it, you kind of go back and forth with it a little bit, bit of in, bit of out. And I noticed that the, the glow plug I took out of the, the fifth cylinder here, I'm not sure if that's cylinder number five or not, it had a Bosch glow plug in it and it was kind of rusty. It didn't look as good as the Beirut's. So uh, we'll see what we find here in the last hole when we get to the end. We need to get a flashlight. It's not easy to see what's going on in here. You know, put those extensions back on. It's kind of funny to use the extension to go to a 3 8 then back down to a quarter. So hopefully you're learning something here by watching me take my time struggling with this. 
because this is how I do it when things are going weird. Okay, so there's no reason just to go and fight with the thing and screw up something. All right, so I'm on there. The torque wrench. Oh, my right, so I'm kind of sitting right in an annoying spot. I'm gonna be able to win with this. Oh, that's the threads creaking. I really should support the end of the ratchet. Forgive me if I block the whole view, but really what you want to do here is just listen to what's happening. So I used a bit of a WD-40 in there and I blew it out when I was done so that the fluid wouldn't always pour into the cylinder. Afterwards, I just popped the socket off. It's okay. As long as we hear that binding, we're good. I feel that it's getting tougher. Go back inwards a bit. Relieve some of the tension. Oh, I'm not enjoying this. Just to let the metal kind of relieve itself in between turns. Because there's quite a bit of pressure on the tiny little fastener. Holy cow. This is too much. I think we're going to get it. Hopefully we don't rip all the threads out by doing this. I guess that is a possibility. to save money. Little wall plugs. Huh. 
gotta wonder if I've got it disengaged from the threads yet. Let's see if I take a peek with the light. Certainly out fairly far. Might have it out back past the threads now. It might just be a, a long battle trying to pull this thing out of here. This is probably stuck in the bore of the glow plug the entire way. I kind of got a feeling I know what brand this glow plug is too. But we'll see. We're done, whether I'm right or not. God, I need to get some upward force at the same time. So when I got tension on the ratchet now, I'm trying to lift up at the same time. Holy cow. All right, I'm just gonna take a break so I can get back in a comfortable position. We're on 10 minutes here. So I guess, uh, I'm going to keep picking away at it and I'll show you where we end up. Alright, so I've been beat by that last glow plug. It's uh, unfretted but it's stuck in the engine right now. So I uh, cleaned the uh, filtered air pipe, wiped the oil out of it, cleaned the turbo, had a few specks of dirt in there from the work, so I wiped that off. Got the um, bolts back on that I'd removed over here on the driver's side. Put some tape over the electrical connector for that glow plug and uh, I guess we're gonna start it up I just got to find something to put over top of that hole in case it blows out not that my Jeep is mint but hoping we can get enough pressure in there to pop it out or at least uh, say we tried anyway So I had the uh, filter purge fitting out, so I'm just going to purge the uh, engine quick here before I start it. I'm just going to do a key on cycle. And then uh, we are going to start it up and see what kind of mayhem we end up with. Well, that's unfortunate, nothing happened. So I guess I'm gonna have to keep trying with this thing here for a bit longer tonight. And if it doesn't pop out, I'm gonna have to keep driving uh, with it unthreaded. All right, the struggle continues. So I used the uh, my hammer and just an extension bar snapped the end of the glow plug off so that I could reach uh, more of the thread. So I'm back to being able to torque on it, but it's just still tight in the bore. So uh, I think that's as far as we're going to go. I guess uh, today's episode is brought to you by the letter F. 
things did not work out. All right, so I continue to pick away at this thing. So at first I used a, a 3 16 bit and uh, drilled through the glow plug about an inch and a half or so. And uh, it didn't get any looser. I was trying to relieve the stress inside of it. But uh, so that was okay. Then I went to 730 seconds. And it's kind of hard to drill here, so you need to have uh, like a drill with an impact extension and an impact drill bit so you can reach in all the way. But when I went to 730 seconds, uh, it ended up weakening the, uh, I guess the shank, as you would call of the uh, glow plug. And it, uh, it snapped off. And I can't get an easy out in there very easily for one easy outs or uh, square drive and uh, don't have uh, a 3 16 square socket I have like a, a quarter inch square socket is the smallest I've got but maybe with a larger hole I can use a, a bigger easy out and uh, so I'll give it another shot and see if we can get that otherwise uh, the struggle continues all right, so I don't know if we're getting from bad to worse or bad to better, but uh, the easy out removed the threads. And uh, so now we've got a bit of a pickle as to how we're ever going to retrieve that uh, glow plug piece out of the engine, but I'll keep working away at it.